Good evening. It is the Oscar expert here with Brother Bro, and it's time for the Oscars. It's gonna be the year of Oppenheimer, and for every award we're predicting Oppenheimer to win, I have I have on my body. And should any of the awards not go to Oppenheimer, I will remove one of these ornaments. Oppenheimer's probably gonna win eight awards. Do you have any final predictions that you want to lock in that are different? That's right. You know, I, I lied. I, I said final predictions, and I changed three of them. I'm not predicting red, white, and blue in short. I'm predicting Henry Sugar. I am predicting Barbie and production design as well as costumes. Wow. And I am predicting the creator for visual effects. I've also changed my production design pick to Barbie, meaning I will be predicting it in costumes and production design. And I have locked in those predictions, you know, for accountability purposes in my own app, uh, award expert supporting actress. It's gonna be Dave I and Joy Randolph. Dave all right, there we go. All right, we knew it would happen, but it's a nice win. You know, she's won a lot, but let's not forget. It's a great win, great performance. Animated short. We're predicting war is over. War is over. This is a short this year that people don't want to win, but it was inevitably going to win. Animated feature, is it Boy in the Heron or is it Spider-Verse? I'm, I'm a little bit on the edge of my toes for this one. Yeah, you should be. Do you have like a last minute feeling? I'm still gonna be surprised if it's Boy in the Heron. The oh boy in the fucking Heron. That's oh like a God. that's a popular movie. Hey, that's a popular movie. Oh my God! Wow! Wow! Huh? I am it won. shocked. The fucking one. Spider Verse didn't win the Oscar after all that. After all that, after people thought, oh, we, maybe we can give this best picture. That's nuts! You know, clearly it was weaker than we expected, but like, holy shit. I think the timing helped a lot for that one. And I guess Hayao Miyazaki, right? Like, that's it. Um, wow, Spider-Verse fucking law. I am I not predicting the next one for Best Picture. I'm just like... I they, want to, but I guess I won't. No, I mean, I'm fucking I, not doing that. Perhaps obsessed. the problem is that the Oscars hate superhero movies and comic book shit and action yeah. shit. Original screenplay. You know, we think it'll probably be Anatomy of a Fall, and I'm hoping that it is. I think the Anatomy of a Fall is the only thing that makes sense, really. Anatomy yes! <laughs> Anatomy Excellent of a Fall! Excellent win! Maybe one of the decade best original screenplays. I mean, original screenplay category is always good. It's always good. Now, Adapted is a little more interesting, I think. I mean, it could be American fiction, but I think that Oppenheimer and maybe a little bit Barbie are, are still... In the mix. Still, some, there's something. American fiction probably gonna win. I would give it, like... 75%. Okay. All right, no surprise okay. here. No surprise here. You know, some people were doubting it, but yeah. I mean, holy shit, it beat Oppenheimer and Poor Things at the Bathurst. Like, yeah. that's all yeah. I needed. That's the biggest set that it, it had. Yeah. Makeup and hair. I think Maestro and Poor Things are actually pretty close, but we did predict Maestro, so we'll see. Poor Things? Poor things. Oh! What the oh! hell is happening? Snubbing Maestro. How the hell did that Shoving happen? Shoving it into the ground, saying, no, you're done. Jesus. I think they're like done with old, like, I guess they're no, just they're... done with that kind of makeup. When does the most makeup like not win? I don't understand. What does this mean for poor things? Are, are we gonna be looking at like, you know, production design costumes? Is that more likely now? Yeah, I wonder if this just means that they love poor things and they're gonna give it best costumes and best production design. That would be, that would be a lot. That would be, be a lot. lot. And here's, here's production design. I don't know, now I'm feeling like production design's gonna be poor things. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm, I mean, I'm, look, I, I, I don't have it. God don't damn don't it, it because shit. I predicted Barbie, but also, good win. Great win. I think that deserves yeah. to win. It does deserve to more win. Than, more than Barbie. Sorry. Oh my god, it's gonna get costumes too. Yep. Fuck. Yep, we Fuck. fucked up. We fucked Fuck. up. God damn it. You had it right. You had it right. When did I have it right? When the last predictions video. And look, the production design lo uh, lone win thing did not happen. Costumes. Now I'm feeling like they just gave all the design awards to poor things. That's that's what I'm thinking. Poor things all right. again. All right. My goodness. Barbie won. Award. They, you know what? They, Song. They weren't as enthusiastic about it. Poor no, things, no. Three, I did not think three, Poor Things was going to They're feeling the awards. same exact way as the BAFTAs right now. Yeah. If Best Actress goes to Emma Stone, that would be like everything the BAFTAs did. Yeah. Critics' Choice did not predict the right winners this year. This is the first year that they, they got both of those categories wrong. Ever? Yep. I think people got tired of Barbie. They are really into Poor Things and the momentum shift shouldn't have been ignored. All right, international feature. We know that this is the Zone of Interest Award. There's no question about it. All right. No way. The only award that Zone of Interest will win, but well, it wasn't win sound. Best film of the year, in my opinion. All right, supporting actor. 
We're looking at a, a Robert Downey Jr. easy win here. And there we there go. There it is. There we go. There it is. Obvious sweep. It feels like because we gave all the non-Oppenheimer awards out early that the rest of the night is just going to be Oppenheimer awards. That, that's, that's exactly how it's going to go. Interesting. Poor thing is winning three awards. You have to think that maybe this could bow well for Emma Stone, right? Yeah. Sure, you could, ha you could think it. Visual effects, one of the categories that was most hotly contested. A lot of people settled on Godzilla minus one. I did make a last minute change to the creator. I'm probably gonna be wrong just, you know, to continue that streak of, uh, of Cole not getting things right tonight. Godzilla! 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 Godzilla I had, a, I had a, a, like, the last feeling I have was like, it's Godzilla. Wow. Man, right. man! Okay, so again, like, you know, random night of theory that like the film that comes out later in the year is gonna win the toss-up category. I, that could be the your, same. your takeaway. They liked that movie the best uh, in the category probably, but I was a little skeptical they would liked the movie because they don't like this this type of movie, but here we are. I mean, if we're arguing about momentum and what's having a moment, like Poor Things, Godzilla, definitely having moments, Maestro, Barbie, you know, definitely like past their prime. So this wasn't nominated anywhere else because even the Critics' Choice didn't do it. No, the point is that the, the people who nominate visual effects have nothing to do with like how general people vote on the award. They like to vote for the movie that they like is really what we're learning here because yeah. at Critics' Choice yeah. and BAFTA and here, the most popular film yeah. that they like the best one. That's true, that's true. All right, we got editing. This will be Oppenheimer. This is one of the easy tech awards for it. We haven't seen it win the tech awards. Here comes the Obby Sweep. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. There we go. Jennifer Lame, first Oscar, great editor. Doc Short. I just don't want it to be ABC's of book banning. You liked The Last Repair Shop a lot, right? Yeah, I did, but those are the only two I've seen. Well, we're predicting The Last Repair Shop. Let's see if we're right. Yes! All right! Yes! All right, we got that right. Let's go. All right, well, there's one category that I think was number two. I think we're going to get three for three on shorts, because Wes Anderson's short is the next short to win an award. Yeah. This is a really good doc. Would would highly recommend. Doc feature. It's probably going to be 20 Days in Mary Paul. It'd be pretty shocking if it wasn't. 20 Days in Yep. 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 Cinematography. It's probably going to be Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Yep. There we go. Yep. Not surrendering any awards. We didn't, oh. we didn't even... We didn't even freak out. All right, live action short. This may just be Wes Anderson's Oscar, or people are going to be very surprised. The wonderful story of Henry yep, yep. There you go. So we got a three for short films. Like, uh, yeah, she yeah. yeah. hasn't happened in a while, has it? What for me personally? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all it happened last year. I believe okay. it happened last year. All right. Wait, Wes Anderson's not there. Wait, he He's just won his first Oscar and he's not here. What the hell? Wow, maybe he doesn't care. Oh, he's probably, just, he's always shooting movies though, you know? So. I wish he, he was able to give a speech. Best sound, probably gonna be Oppenheimer, but but there's a little, there's yeah. a little possibility that this is a of interest, I think would be real juicy. Yeah, get rid of that. That is what one less the hell? Oh award. my god. Wow. Congrats, Johnny Byrne. Oh my god. Oh my For god. Zone of interest to win sound. That is For that movie to win sound. That incredible. is incredible. That is totally counter to the, what we would, how we would expect this award to go. That movie has two Very awesome. deserving, so they creative. They fucking love the Zone of Interest. And, and Oppenheimer would have been so worthy too, but like... Yeah, but this is more... I like, mean, I can't complain one bit. They are doing what the BAFTAs did. They're doing exactly what the BAFTAs did. They are what still the doing did. what the BAFTAs exactly did. Exactly what the yeah. BAFTAs did. Wow. Man, if they held the nominations later, this it probably would have gotten a, a couple more, I think. Oh my god. Man, the sound was so interesting in the Zone of Interest. Ha Oppenheimer losing, and with this movie not having an editing nomination? Best score? This will be Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. There yep. you go. Yep. A great win. Fantastic win. Yep. Oh, best song? Billie Eilish. Yeah, the Billie, Billie Eilish one wins. Yep. Even though I'm just can't absolutely stole the goddamn show, I, as it was always going to, you yeah, know, as it was always that, going that, to. That thing rocked the house. Maybe, and... maybe they they can you know feel a little regret after yeah. the performance, and they should have given it to I'm Just Ken, but uh, I knew it was gonna go this way. All right, best actor, probably Killian Murphy. Murphy. All right, wow, there it is. Oppenheimer does not have any more awards it can lose. When I first saw the performance, I did not think it was the kind that would win, just because it wasn't quite as showy as what we're used to, but. 
You know, this year was quite a reckoning with the typical Oscar bait performance, given that Bradley Cooper, you know, in my mind, in the traditional mindset, would have won the Oscar for Maestro. And I think that everybody will be able to agree on this one, whereas Best Actor, a lot of times, you know, a lot of people are not happy with the winners. Mm. Everyone's going to be happy about this one. You know, yet again, a Best Picture movie that wins an acting prize. Yeah. And this one has two. And by the way, this is the longest streak ever that SAG Ensemble has correlated with Best Picture. It's three in a row. Wow, really? Yep, it's never been three It's in never a row. been three. It's been two many times, Damn. but never three. And here comes Steven Spielberg to give Christopher Nolan the Oscar. There it is. There he has is. his Oscar. Yep. After all what these a great years. win. Great win. I'm glad that Christopher Nolan actually... You know, won an Oscar instead of being like some directors who just go through their entire careers never winning. Yeah. You know, he found his time. He had to make the right Oscar bait movie. Best Actress. I, I, I still think Lily Gladstone probably would be like, man, is there some doubt with the awards poor things has been winning? Yeah, I, I still think it's Lily Gladstone. I, yeah. That's my last minute feeling on it. Ah! 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 BAFTAS! BAFTAS! Oh my god. She fucking won. She oh, fucking shit. won. Oh my she god. She fucking won. They copied the BAFTAs all the way down. Oh my god. Wow. Two Oscars. Two <laughs> Oscars. People were convinced of the narrative. People were convinced that oh, uh, which which war goes last. People were convinced about SAG of the last year, and they and it's it was the showy performance that won. Man, poor things for four Oscars. Four Oscars for poor things. Probably won by a rabbit's hair. Won by a oh, rabbit's hair. hair. Obviously wow. in second place for best picture. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a fucking question about it. Yeah. Undeniably, like, either way that this would go, whether it was Lily or Emma, this is a great win. Because these are two great performances, very memorable. Very memorable, both of them, really. Yeah. And in, in films that will be remembered for a long time. It, you know, just it's a fascinating play of like the the newer actor versus the one who has another Oscar and who's doing the bigger performance, like people thought that the narrative would like triumph. All hey, it wor it works better at SAG. Let's just say that. Like, yeah, they, they, I think they so. like that so. more. Listen, they like we we just can't use the argument that like the Oscars want to award award diversity that badly. It just I, I was saying this. I was saying I can't think of a single award that the Academy Awards have given where, where I could say that diversity factored in like a whole lot when I'm talking about the acting categories. And also, Poor Things being really well liked. Yeah. It that was helped liked too. Well, of course and it helped. helped with Olivia Coleman beating Glenn Close, who had a, a very strong narrative I mean, on look, her I, side. I, I think that helps the most. I mean, if Killers of the Flower Moon was as well liked as Poor Things, I think they the could have gone The Father the was a very loved movie as well, and yeah. that beat uh, someone with a very strong narrative. Yeah. So look, it always feels tempting to go with the, the, the one that has like the narrative, you know? But I mean, I, look I at all the acting winners. They're coming from top three movies. Yeah. You could argue yeah, I would, Holdovers I would is, say so. You could argue Holdovers is top three. I would say probably. You could argue it. I would say probably Holdovers, Poor Things, Top Three, unless Zone of Interest, maybe. Or maybe American Fiction. Well, there's the above the line surprise. And my, like, the Baptists were literally right about every single category. Every single one. And the only one they weren't right about was visual effects because they gave it to a movie that wasn't nominated here. So also, wins. the BAFTA's track record of being good at best actors didn't just magically end. The BAFTA's are back. People were like ready to throw them in the trash. Yeah. And now they're back. People thought they were maybe the more important cre precursor than the SAG, and then last year was the only one where people said, oh, it turned around, and maybe the reason it turned around is because it was the last one this year. Wait, Best Picture's getting red. Best Picture's getting red. All right, oh. Oppenheimer won Best Picture. All right. Uh, so Oppenheimer has seven Oscars. Yep. You know, didn't didn't do eight, but did seven. Some years, <laughs> some years are super BAFTA. Some years are super not BAFTA. It's, you know, every year is very different. Like, yeah. Poor Things was it not the favorite. It just depends what their favorite film is. Poor Things was not the favorite. You know, what happened with Elvis last year winning four BAFTAs and no Oscars? Like, that, just, like, a lot of things just weren't the same. Yeah. yeah. Every year is very different. It, really, it comes down to a couple movies, right? Elvis was responsible. Elvis's underperformance was responsible for a lot of the categories we got wrong, right? At the last year's category. Yeah, Awards. and Poor Things was responsible for all the categories that I did really badly in yeah. this year. It was really on how yeah. well you think Poor Things was going to do was the most yeah. crucial thing. Ver versus how strong you think Barbie still is. Overall, the show, I think, was very good. Yeah. I thought they had some tasteful bits, some good musical performances, good speeches, didn't play anybody off. They presented all of the tech awards and they highlighted some of the best parts about those awards. It was interesting that they chose to highlight the stunts and do a tribute to them and then not 
announce a new category like i don't know if anyone else thought that was gonna happen. ready to announce a new category yet but i think are they, they like are they like putting a line in the water to see if people are receptive to that and they, if it's they, like a viral thing they must be working on it they must you be think so i think if they create a branch for stunt people instead of having them in like this miscellaneous sort of branch that they have now that would be a first step and maybe recruiting more people who can vote on the category all the acting winners are very good it's a it's a very good quartet i would say in a lot of the below the line categories conventional wisdom felt like it got bucked the fact that zone of interest won sound that felt like a step forward for the way that people consider sound. They didn't give it to the nuclear explosion movie. Also, animated feature feels like that kind of bucked the trend of going towards the more populist movie and it went for a more independent and thought-provoking movie, but you could also just say, well, Hayao Miyazaki is just that big. And makeup, you know, the whole thing with Maestro this year, like the recap on Maestro is people just saying that we don't want this anymore. Like we don't want you to transform and like try to win your Oscar for makeup and actor. We're kind of tired of it. Even though it did happen last year with The Whale. Also, you know, that makeup actress pair actually did kind of come to fruition, didn't they? <laughs> I guess so. Costumes for poor things over Barbie is not that surprising, but Barbie was so flashy that I still, you know, I'm a little bit surprised when I think about it. Oh, and you know, instead of people going, oh, the last awards thing that happened is what they're gonna do. I feel like it's now gonna be more about what film came out later and what film has the steam. We need we need to have our in memoriam segment. Saltburn got no nominations. R.I.P. Yeah. Saltburn. Is it only movies Saltburn. that got no nominations? Like no, it's just like that? movies that were supposed to do good and didn't. May December. R.I.P. Charles Melton. Once again, Honestly, like Charles Melton should have been in the in memoriam at the Oscars. Yeah. The color purple. Rest in peace, that movie, for yeah. only getting one nomination. Huge underperformance. The Iron Claw. The Iron Claw. Rest in peace, yeah. The Iron Claw. Yeah. Very good movie that didn't get anything and because another it was year. a crowded year. And another year. I also feel like Perfect Days in another year could have been, yeah, sure. been something, you know? I would like to say this about Nyad, but we can't because it had a really good haul. Getting two acting nominations there was great. R.I.P. to the world where past lives got like five nominations. Can I say that? Does that um, count? You could, you could shout that out. Oh, R.I.P. Air. Very funny. R.I.P. Really? here. We can definitely say this now. R.I.P. Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. R.I.P. Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. R.I.P. Origin. Origin tried. Origin wanted so, it. Some people were it trying. Just didn't some happen. people were trying to do that. Very R.I.P. to Spider-Verse. Like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. All the Strangers, R.I.P. No nominations for that one. Yeah. R.I.P. The Killer? Oh, R.I.P. Ferrari. Yeah. Ferrari kind of wanted yeah. awards and that yeah. didn't get any. So listen, this is the first year that the app that I've developed, Award Expert, where you can make your Oscar predictions, you can follow your friends, see what they're predicting. First year that we've done it. In a couple of days, you're going to see a lot more events hit the Award Expert app. You're going to see next year's Academy Awards, of course, that you can start predicting immediately. But you're also going to see all the other major awards bodies, which we didn't do this year. So if you are a fiend and you want to start predicting SAG Ensemble, you can go right ahead. You can go right ahead and use the app for that. Gold Derby doesn't let you do that till like September. Oh, Gold Derby doesn't let you do anything till late. Another highly requested feature is that we release an event where people can list their preferences for what they would have picked if they were the Oscars, doing Best Picture, Best Actor, all of that stuff that the Academy Awards do. And that will be releasing for both 2024 and 2025. So you can start making your list 2025 and you can go back and add all of the movies that you liked for last year. There's a lot more coming with the app, and you know, you should go sign up, because you're gonna have a lot of fun. You take the Oscars to the palm of your hand. You know, it almost gets us thinking about next year's Oscars, doesn't it? Oh, sure. You know, some people claim that they don't like this, but when we do the early predictions video, it gets views. People want it, there's a demand, so you know, we're gonna do that. That's coming up. Will next year be an indie sensation, winning Best Picture, or do you think, in general, it's gonna be like, a bigger budget studio film. Sing Sing. Sing Sing. That's all you have to say about that? Yep. I know I Dune like came out, but I'm still saying. I don't think Dune's gonna win Best Picture. No. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. You think an indie film is gonna win Best Picture next year, or do you think it's gonna be a big studio film?